In today's video, we are going to be meeting a young Nigerian man who manufactures tractors and agricultural equipment. Part of the agricultural activities is still done manually. And when we compare Nigeria and other countries, the system of agriculture is left behind. Today, we are in just Nigeria to meet a true innovator in agricultural technology. Meet Jerry Malu, a visionary engineer changing farming with a homegrown solution. I grew up in a farming society. I was always on the farm. So I always thought about mechanized systems that could hasten the work I was doing. I kept thinking of a machine that would help me do it in one week. So just building on that from a child and coming up to seeing the need for the agricultural machineries was why um, we bettered um, Benny Agro. From concept to creation, he's empowering local farmers and transforming the agricultural landscape. Stay tuned as we uncover his journey, the challenges he faced, and the future he's building for Nigerian agriculture. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories from this channel. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Simon Arbefimus here again, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are here again with Mr. Jerry Malu, who is the CEO of Benny Agro. We interviewed him in our last video, and he spoke about his new model of vehicle, which was Benny Stanum. And today, we're here to talk about his agro machines. It's nice to meet you again. Nice meeting you. Um, yeah. So, what inspired you to start building agro machines? So, um, basically, a, a good part of the inspiration comes from the fact that part of the agricultural uh, activities is still done manually and we see it as an opportunity for us to put our values into place and when we compare Nigeria and other countries the system of agriculture is left behind a lot of the activities is still done manually it's just seeing how we could solve those problems by the skills that we have in place and um, I think for me as a person the inspiration came a lot when growing up I grew up in a farming society yeah. I loved cars and I needed more time to study cars but I was always on the farm. So I always thought about mechanized systems that could hasten the work I was doing. If, I had, yeah, if yeah. I had three weeks to finish the work, I, I kept thinking of a machine that would help me do it in one week. So I have the rest of the two weeks to, yeah, to study yeah. about automotives yeah. and the rest. So just building on that from a child and coming up to seeing the need for the agricultural machineries was why um, we bettered um, Benny Agro Benny and Agro. we've been designing machines since then. So Benny Agro started before other subsidiaries? Um, automobile was the first, but okay. um, due to the high need of finance for the automobile, we had to put it on a halt and solve problems um, so that in turn, if we now are financially stable, then look back to automobile. But basically, automobile was first before agro, agro. Yeah, and agro became the mother of them all okay can you tell us about the first machine you created how did you feel like so um the first machine i did was um, a maze treasure i had sketches i had ideas of how i could do that um, but i didn't have access to finance to produce it so um it was a difficult one this is like um 13 years ago 13 years ago yeah 13 <laughs> years ago my dad worked in another local government so someone came and gave me some monies to keep for him and uh, he was going to return in three days time so i gambled using the money you gambled the money you yes were to, you I, I think it was about forty five thousand. wow <laughs> so i i ran to someone selling metals i made deposit i went to another man that had a workshop i made deposit i told him i want to fabricate a machine i will mm. use your tools your equipment mm. and i'll pay your balance at the end of the day so i got the machines i'll tell him bend it this way cut it this way weld it this way i didn't even know how to weld and as he was doing i was assisting i was holding the handle i was mm. welding i basically never learned welding like that so I was doing it gradually and uh, the second day I was done with the machine. So I took the machine back home and my dad normally paid people to trash maize manually. Paid them about 200,000. Wow. So in my opinion, that 45,000 was just a fraction of the money he was going yes, to spend. Yes, we're going to up to half of it. Yeah. So on finishing the machine, I went yeah. home and started trashing the maize instantly. So as he came back on his return, the third day, he saw me trashing the maize. Where did you get this machine from? I made it. Um, they gave me this money to give you and this is the money yeah, I, used I used for here. He was mad. He was angry, but I was threshing the maze already. And the third day, I had finished the maze. Wow. So I had finished threshing. So basically, I've saved him like 150. Please don't try this. Yours may not end like that. Was a lot of risk. That was a lot of risk. But um, I'm someone who is propelled by anything worth doing is worth doing. It's worth doing. Um, yeah. uh, regardless of odds being against you. Mm. So um, I, I pushed, and before I knew, I was using the thresher to thresh other people's maze. Um, our neighbors, other farmers. 
and in less than a month i think i had recouped the money times 10 or so then wow. i left it for one of my cousins to be doing commercial services i recouped the money a lot from that machine mm. and um i now had farmers making deposit to get theirs yeah. made for them that then was after you did that first model after i did mine i <coughs> threshed for so many farmers they saw the workability they saw how fast the machine was they saw the durability so why not go for an easier method so they start paying me to make for them for instead them. of them paying for services so i made for the second person and then i had one man come and tell me that he knows so many farmers that want the treasure but he wants commission percentage from every customer that he brings every farmer that he brings and i said yes. why not and we <laughs> negotiated and before i know i was making the 10th one the 11th one and wow. i could no longer do the work alone so i needed more hands to join me in making them i had the second person the third person and before i knew we were more than five mm. making this treasure we're building so, um, Benny Agro like that. Yeah, that gradually. I um, then I didn't even know anything company registration. I was just doing it because I, I needed to solve problems. Now that you become a company, how do you meet the needs of Nigerian farmers? Our focus has been on small and medium scale farmers. We believe that over half of the farmers in Nigeria fall within that range. And um, our quest has been to see that we have affordable and available agro machineries to them. So we designed this equipment to suit our environment here. We designed them to suit their financial capacities. And we designed them to be user friendly to these farmers. And so far we've been trying to, to make more impact around that. And I will say we've been having progress mm. over these years. We now have equipment that's cut across maize, rice, cassava, yam, mm. potato, wow. beans, and which we feel are the major cultivated crops um, yes. in Nigeria. In Nigeria yeah. Okay, so could you walk us through the machines here? Yeah, um, these are handheld tractors. Handheld tractors? Yeah, um, we try to when see When do you that. mean handheld tractor? What do you mean? This, um, you hold it. Okay. It cultivates as you walk as along you walk, with okay. it. Okay. Um, they are just mini tractors. Okay. These are not new technologies, but we try to be innovative around them mm. and see how one machine can serve multiple purposes for the farmers. Currently, we don't make the prime movers ourselves. What's prime mover? That's like the diesel petrol okay. engine. Yeah, the sources of the power. We don't make them ourselves. Um, um, we import them, assemble them, and then we make other attachments Attachment to, to them. Mm. So this is a maize harvester. With this attachment on the tractor, you can harvest corn uh, to break the corn, peel it, shred the stalk, and then collect. You can collect the corn out yeah, from this wow. other side. This machine? Yes, this machine, and it's, mm. it's really fast um, next to it there is the trailer that you can attach to this tractor and transport your harvested product mm -hmm. from the farm mm -hmm. um, we build all this in-house next to it is, is the rice harvester mm -hmm. um, known as rice reaper this cuts the rice rather than the local way they use sickles in doing sickles, it okay. it cuts the rice and then it, it gathers it at one point you can also attach a planter the planters you can plant uh, rice um, millet, beans, granuts, and a couple of others. Mm. Basically, seed planters still attached on the multiple treasure. For older people who cannot walk behind these tractors, we design special seats for them. For them. So they sit down, control the tractor as the, that tractor. Yes, that same mini tractor. Wow. And then we have the ridges attached to the seat. So as you move, it makes mm. ridges. So this is a plastic recycling machine. At Benny, we consider ourselves to be uh, a match stick so many lamps. The idea is to see how we motivate so many people to start putting values around the country and beyond. With this, we have people who get these plastic melting machines mixed with sand, they make interlocks, roofing sheets, and so many oh. others. So you mix your shredded plastic and sand into this place. This and, is electric? Yes, this is electric. And before it comes out here, it's melted and mixed together. It has panels <coughs> where you can control, adjust the temperature to the required um, viscosity that you need. So next to it is a small size maize treasures. With this, you need to peel the maize first before you pour into the threshing chamber and it separates the greens from the husk and you collect your clean greens out of that okay. powered by a petrol engine okay with low fuel consumption yeah, and we discuss with farmers and try to design these machines in a way that suits them in a way that um they wish it to be we observe that most farmers store doors are very slim and narrow that these machines can't easily fit, in. fit into so um, this is foldable wow. so the machines become slim wow. 
wow. that it can easily wow. move into i i see you, you as a farmer already you, that you are you already have other farmers in mind so basically we exist for the farmers we don't exist for true. ourselves that's true so we make sure that what we produce suits what they want you want yeah mm. and next to it here is a medium sized maize thresher. With this, you don't need to peel the corn. From harvest, as you break, you can just put it in to peel it, it to thresh it, to separate the husk from the cups. Okay. And with little fuel consumption, you get your clean grains. It also has a winnowing chamber that removes the dust and other unwanted impurities from the grains. And um, this has tires that you can easily tow around, move okay. from one point to another. You can easily attach to your motorcycle. That's considering that most small scale farmers don't have tractors. tractors. To Move this mm -hmm. but most of them have motorcycles so you can easily attach this to your motorcycle Cycle and move it and around yes so what were the biggest challenges you faced in developing these machines the biggest challenge was lack of work tools and equipment i'm forced to improvise if i needed to bend metal sheets to a particular angle i didn't have any tool to do it okay i have to just come up with innovative ideas on how to do it if i needed lead machine to turn shafts i didn't have access to it i had to travel like three hours to get access wow. to um, to that. Another challenge was security. I was basically doing the work outside. I didn't have a proper workshop to safeguard my properties and you had limited time to work because of the insecurity challenges there as of then. So um, before six, I need to close and it was hard for me to meet up with demands not working at night and that. And yeah, finance is usually a challenge for mm -hmm. things like this. Mm -hmm. So all those tools, equipment I needed, I needed to buy. I didn't have finances to get them. Um, I had more designs. I wanted to practicalize. I didn't have access to finance to build them. A lot of times I'll have to take loans to produce samples that may not work. I may have to produce four or five times before I get it right. And those loans are um, paying interest. interest. Sometimes I don't even have the money to pay. I take another loan to pay that one just to get a workable wow. sample. So wow. it was a very big challenge for me. But I kept mm. struggling those ways gradually to where Benny is. Oh, that, that's amazing. My name is Mutap Longji. Come, let me take you around. This is a multiple crop thresher and as the name implies, it is a thresher that threshes a multiple of crops that is being harvested on the farm. The likes of rice, um, beans, we have maize, um, all of them after harvest from the farm can easily pour them into the machine and it has the power to thresh it and brings out the fine grain. What impact do you see your machines having in agriculture in Nigeria or in Africa? So firstly, um, we want to see how we encourage um, local products. We want to see how we have values that boost the economy mm. at large. We want to see how agricultural activities can be encouraged. We have so many crops that are gradually going extinct because there's little or no more cultivation on those crops and it's because the process is very tedious and difficult and um, we want to see how um, the aid of these mechanizations can encourage the cultivation of these crops how these machines can help farmers save time, time. rather than spending spending less hours on the farm basically because time is money you yeah. save you're able yeah. to make and, it and if you still do agriculture farming the manual way the hard way how long will you be able to do that so we want to see how they are encouraged that they will do farming as business mm -hmm. they will do farming as a long time achievement now for your customers people that you sell to how do you put their feedback into you improving your machines. One of the things we don't play with in Benny is customer's feedback. So we have a particular team in the company that their main goal is to discuss, liars, get feedbacks from these farmers and channel these challenges to our design team mm. where they redesign these machines to suit the targets of those farmers. Um, we've had situations where we design machines the way we want, not the way the farmers mm -hmm. want. And we've put it upon ourselves to make sure that doesn't happen again. We design these machines in a way that they are comfortable operating them and making use of them on the farm. So yes, we are very open to um, their feedbacks from um, from their experiences Experience with the with. machines and then we develop on it and make it much more better. Do you share any success story uh, from any farmer who has used your machine? Recently, I think about a month ago, we had a woman come to Benny and she said somebody from her area bought a machine from us. So she has come to get that same type of machine. machine. We said, which machine is it? She said, German machine. <laughs> She called it German yes, machine. Yes, she called it German machine. So um, it was sweetening to hear that um, our brand is associated with Germany, which are known for quality, quality. which are known for standard. Wow. The wow. machine she wanted was just a grinding machine. Because the grinding machine was very dogged, it was durable, 
it was fast the functionalities were all attained so she 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 tagged the german machine oh, okay. and she said she wanted exactly what that her neighbor, her neighbor also got. so uh, it was a sweet um, encouragement for us where do you see agriculture or the future of agricultural machinery in the future? We hope that we see that agriculture, the narrative, the notion around agriculture in Nigeria and beyond is changed. So it doesn't continue being as agriculture is for the poor people, but rather agriculture should be seen as a business, should be seen as a necessity that moves an economy forward. We hope to see that people are, are proud of mentioning that they are farmers. We hope on seeing that through agriculture, you are able to make maximum um, yield. You are able to make maximum profit from the labors, from the efforts you are doing and doing it for so many years, but not feeling stressed out mm. by the support and the uh, assistance you get from the machineries that we make available. Yes, so um, I'm sure you open to consultancy, like you do consultancy and all of that. Very well. Yeah. Um, we, we are open to that. We advise at, at due. Um, if our attention is needed, we make ourselves available. Advice from the cultivation process to the harvesting process, and even down to the processing um, stages. We provide equipment where we can. Amazing. All right. So do well to reach out to Benny. I will drop his details down in the description below and do also reach out to Benny Agro Companies and if you enjoyed this video it's a very wonderful video if you did please do well to leave a comment tell us what you learned in the video and also please subscribe and also I will drop the link to Benny's channel down below you can check out their videos because they make amazing videos on all of these right yeah we do yeah, so you can check it out and also leave a thumbs up and please subscribe we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers soon We'll see you in the next video. Peace.